Should your art send you to prison? Well, it did for Vontae Skinner. In 2008, rapper Vontae Skinner was tried in the shooting of Lamont Peterson. During the trial and over repeated objections from the defense, the prosecutor read the jury 13 pages of Mr. Skinner's violent rap lyrics, even though all were composed years before the shooting and none of them mentioned Peterson or details about the crime. And yet the jury found him guilty of attempted murder. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison. But on appeal, the New Jersey Supreme Court ruled that the lyrics should never have been admitted as evidence in the first place, noting one would not presume that Bob Marley, who wrote the well-known song, I Shot the Sheriff, actually shot a sheriff, or that Edgar Allan Poe buried a man beneath his floorboards, as depicted in his short story, The Telltale Heart, simply because of their respective artistic endeavors on those subjects. The court reasons that defendants' lyrics should receive no different treatment. Mr. Skinner received a new trial. Skinner's case is far from unique. Rap lyrics are increasingly turning up as evidence in courtrooms across the country. In fact, our research has uncovered hundreds of these cases, cases where defendants are rarely as fortunate as Skinner was. Rather than treat rap as a form of artistic expression, prosecutors argue that the lyrics are either autobiographical confessions of a crime or evidence of a defendant's criminal motive. Our research, as well as our experience as expert witnesses in such trials, suggests that rap lyrics are of questionable evidentiary value and that their use in court can result in unfair prejudice. No other form of fictional expression is treated this way in the courts. Using rap lyrics as evidence in criminal cases raises critical questions about artistic freedom, our freedom of speech, and the right of all citizens in this country to receive a fair trial. Attorneys frequently contact us for research on the implications of using rap lyrics as evidence, in large part to ensure that their clients' First Amendment rights are protected. Yet I'm aware of only two studies that address this issue, and both are outdated. With your support, my graduate student Adam Dunbar and I will conduct a series of experiments, all of which in different ways and approaches will test the impact of rap lyrics on juror decision making. I'm Adam Dunbar. I'm a graduate student in the Department of Criminology, Law and Society at UC Irvine, and am trained in experimental methods. I work with Professor Kubrin to conduct research on the implications of using rap lyrics as evidence. This issue is really important to me because it highlights the potentially biased ways in which we determine who is more likely to be threatening, and even who is more likely to be criminal. While race is often described as a source of bias determining who is likely to, likely to be perceived as criminal, much less is known about how cultural cues are used to make bias evaluations. Think about what cultural cues we use to determine whether or not someone is threatening. What if the person is wearing baggy pants? What if the person is from a poor neighborhood? And what if the person writes violent rap lyrics? It is this last question that motivates me to examine how people interpret the meaning of rap lyrics and how rap lyrics as evidence may impact evaluations of threat and guilt. One major concern is that jurors' decisions may be biased because prosecutors may be playing on stereotypes about who is likely to be criminal, which means that defendants may not always be getting a fair trial. Yet there is minimal scholarly research out there on this issue. For this reason, Professor Kubrin and I are developing a series of experiments that will examine how rap lyrics impact decision making, especially in the context of a criminal trial. Although we focus on using rap lyrics as evidence, this is more than just a rap music issue. This is about social justice. Why? Because the practice disproportionately affects young black men from impoverished neighborhoods who see a career in rap as a means to escape poverty. This suggests that using rap lyrics as evidence may contribute to enduring racial disparities in our criminal justice system. We are also concerned about the free speech rights of everyday Americans. This practice may expand to other forms of artistic expression especially as artists use social media websites like Facebook and YouTube to market their work. We need your help to make this critical research happen. You can help by either funding participants, funding entire experiments, or even supplementing the costs associated with disseminating this research to legal professionals and the public at large. We invite you to be part of this scientific investigation and ultimately to help us advance social justice.